In the 19th century, the world was lit by fire and powered by steam. But a young, uneducated blacksmith's son had a different vision. This was the boy that would become the renowned scientist, Michael Faraday. But while the scientific elite looked for answers in complex mathematics, this young boy looked for them with his hands. With simple wires and magnets, he searched for a hidden unity in the forces of nature. On August 29, 1831, in a dusty London laboratory, that radical idea was put to the test. His setup was simple, an iron ring wrapped with two coils of wire. One was connected to a battery, the other to a device that could detect the faintest whisper of a current. He took a breath and connected the battery. Across the room, a needle jumped and then fell still. That tiny movement held the secret to a whole new world. But what did it mean? And how did a man with no formal education even know how to find it? The world of electricity didn't begin in a wealthy home or a university. It started in the poor streets of London with a boy who had nothing. Michael Faraday was born in 1791, the son of a blacksmith who was often too sick to work. His family was so poor that Faraday later remembered a time when he was given just a single loaf of bread to last him an entire week. He didn't go to school for very long, just enough to learn the basics of reading and writing. In a world rigidly defined by class and wealth, his future seemed set in stone. A life of hard work without ever being noticed. But amidst this hardship, his family had an anchor, their small church, which provided a powerful moral and spiritual foundation. At age 14, Faraday was sent to work, apprenticed to a bookbinder. For a boy with no education, it was supposed to be a simple trade for a simple life. But for Michael Faraday, it became a doorway into a new universe, an opportunity for an education his family couldn't afford. That dusty bookshop became his university. The books he was paid to bind became his teachers. He read with a hunger for knowledge. Captivated by the science articles, he stayed up late, poring over every word about electricity in the Encyclopedia Britannica and a book called Conversations on Chemistry. The work itself was the perfect training. Stitching pages and working with leather taught him patience and gave him the steady hands that were essential for his future experiments. His master, a kind man named George Rebo, saw the fire in the young man's eyes. He gave him time to attend scientific lectures and even space in the back of the shop to perform his own simple experiments. It was there, with copper coins and zinc discs, that Faraday built his first electric battery. More than a bookbinder, he was now a scientist in secret. But to go public, he would need an opportunity, a single ticket that would change his life forever. That single ticket arrived in 1812. A customer at the bookshop, seeing the young man's passion, gave him passes to a series of lectures by the most famous scientist in England, Sir Humphrey Davy. For Faraday, the lectures were a revelation. This was the world he desperately wanted to join. But he knew a simple letter asking for a job would be ignored by the scientific elite. He needed to prove his worth in a way that no one could deny. So he came up with a brilliant plan. He took his lecture notes and spent weeks expanding them, adding detailed drawings until he had a 300-page manuscript. Then, he did the one thing no other applicant could do. He used his craft to bind it into a magnificent book. He sent this volume to Davy. It was a demonstration of his diligence, his mind, and his unique skill. Davy was impressed, but he had no positions available. Faraday's dream was put on hold. Then, a twist of fate. A fight broke out in Davy's laboratory, and an assistant was fired. Davy immediately remembered the bookbinder and his remarkable book. On March 1, 1813, Michael Faraday walked through the doors of the Royal Institution not as a guest, but as a chemical assistant. He had made it, but getting the job was just the first step. His real education was about to begin, and his new mentor would prove to be both his greatest teacher and his harshest trial. Faraday's education began almost immediately. Shortly after he was hired, 
Faraday embarked on a grueling 18-month tour of Europe with Davy. He met the giants of European science, talking with legends like André, Marie Ampère in Paris, and Alessandro Volta in Milan. His mind was absorbing a world-class scientific education. But while his intellect was treated as an equal, the man himself was not. Davy's aristocratic wife refused to see past his low-class origins. She forced Faraday to perform the duties of a personal servant, making him eat with the other valets. This constant humiliation was a source of deep pain, but it was also a blessing in disguise. The friction and social slights prevented him from becoming a mere follower of Davy. It forged in him a fierce intellectual independence. When he returned to London in 1815, he was no longer just an assistant. He was a changed man, equipped with a world-class education and a burning desire to prove himself. The apprenticeship was over. The age of discovery was about to begin. Upon his return to London, Faraday's rise was fast. He quickly moved from assistant to the prestigious director of the laboratory at the Royal Institution. The era of his own groundbreaking research had begun. His first great revolution came in 1821. Following a new discovery that electricity creates a magnetic field, Faraday came up with an ingenious experiment. He made an electric wire rotate continuously around a magnet. In that simple spinning wire, he had just invented the world's first electric motor. But a single powerful question haunted him for the next decade. If electricity could produce magnetism, could magnetism produce electricity? On the 29th of August, 1831, he found the answer. With his famous iron ring and two coils of wire, he proved that a changing magnetic field could create an electric current. He had discovered electromagnetic induction, the principle of the electric generator. It was the key to creating electricity on a massive scale. He went on a quest to unify the forces of nature, proving all forms of electricity were identical. In 1845, he found the first evidence of a link between magnetism and light. But perhaps his greatest contribution was an idea. See, Faraday's math was weak. He struggled with complex equations. This forced him to think differently from everyone else. To explain these strange forces, he didn't write equations. He visualized them, imagining that space was not empty, but filled with invisible lines of force. This was the revolutionary concept of the electromagnetic field, the foundation of modern physics. The electric motor, the generator, field theory, these were the discoveries that built our world. But they all sprang from a mind that saw the universe differently from anyone else. So, where did this unique and powerful vision come from? The source of Faraday's vision was found in his quiet, disciplined Christian faith. In an age when many saw a great conflict between science and religion, Faraday saw none. His faith wasn't a separate part of his life. It was the very lens through which he saw the world. That worldview was the secret to his genius. He didn't use science to try and prove the existence of God. Instead, his absolute faith in God was the starting point that guided all of his scientific questions. His belief in one creator convinced him that all of nature's forces like electricity, magnetism, and light must be connected. He saw his lines of force as a physical manifestation of God's continuous, active power throughout the universe. This powerful faith was the secret to his scientific mind, and it was also the secret to his personal character. How did the man who was unlocking the secrets of the universe live his day-to-day -day life? Faraday lived a simple, humble life. For him, there was no gap between what he believed and how he acted. His faith was the source of his science and the source of his strict ethical code. He was not after riches or honor. Despite achieving global fame, he consistently rejected the world's recognition. Twice, he was offered the presidency of the prestigious Royal Society. Twice, he declined them. When the crown offered him a knighthood, he politely refused, stating that he wished to remain plain Mr. Faraday to the end. He repeatedly turned down high-paying jobs in the private sector, choosing to focus on research for the benefit of all humanity. His sense of duty was absolute. His humility from the belief that he was no more nor any less than any other man. To make science accessible to all, 
he created the now famous Christmas Lectures for the public. And when the government asked for his help in developing chemical weapons for the Crimean War, his faith and conscience led him to refuse. Michael Faraday's legacy is all about unity. Scientifically, he revealed the deep connections between electricity, magnetism, and light. His work continues to inspire the modern search for a theory of everything, a single theory that would bind all the fundamental forces of physics together, something he would have seen as the presence of God in the world. Indeed, he demonstrated that a life of rigorous science and simple faith could be one and the same. To him, his exploration of the universe was an act of worship, and it echoes every time we flip a switch and say, let there be light. Faraday didn't have a degree or a safety net, just determination and a hunger to learn. Today, we face a similar choice, adapt, learn, and stay relevant, or get left behind. With AI, the world's changing faster than ever. What you knew five years ago may already be obsolete. You don't want another degree. You just want to stay sharp to learn what actually matters for your job or your next move. But with so much noise online, it's hard to find reliable, structured knowledge that leads to real skills. That's where Udemy comes in. Udemy is a learning platform built for people who want to upskill without wasting time. You learn directly from professionals in your field, not theory, but the exact tools and strategies used in real work. It's flexible, practical, and you can learn at your own pace. Udemy offers over 200,000 expert-led courses in business, tech, and creative fields. You get lifetime access, certificates of completion, and affordable courses. And with progress tracking, you always know how far you've come. As Teresa, a real Udemy learner, shared, it hasn't just changed my life, it's been transformational. For me, Udemy means hope for the future. If you want to level up your career and stay competitive without going back to school, click the link in the description below and explore the courses you love.